Hi, Dave Mad Max 6. We are back at the Mac and this is Muscle Beach TV for Jay Cutler TV with your very beautiful Laura Lee Chapados. Hi, Laura Lee. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for having me again and again and again and not getting tired. And uh, it's such an amazing opportunity. Thank you. Well, we, we love to have you. You know, we're pushing for you and uh, we're so excited to see you compete at, at your second Olympia this year. Um, uh, so I want to talk about, of course, the Olympia and, uh, and Italy that, that you just just one right after but I want to talk a lot I want to go a little bit more deep this time and I want to talk about your you know um, your early days before you were competing and, and, and what you're going to do back home and also uh, how you feel that you really have found your place here which is uh, I think the problem of a lot of people so we talk about a lot of stuff off camera because we're friends and I'm sometimes as we're talking I'm like oh my gosh you should say that on camera because it's so inspiring you know for people watching thank you thank yeah. you let's start with Anything Let's start about you the want. Olympia. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so this was your second Olympia, and very different than than last year, as you prepped in California mostly uh, versus uh, in Montreal, um, and uh, you finished in third place, uh, which I thought. Were you, were you fourth? I thought you were third. Oh Thank my God, you, really? Yeah. I, went, I had you winning, <laughs> just so you know. But So talk to me about the experience in your second Olympia. You made a lot of progress. We looked on your phone, the, uh, comparing pictures compared to last year, and I, I was blown away from the progress you made this year. Uh, so talk to me about the Olympia and your experience and how you felt. Um, okay, so starting off from this whole entire year have been roller coaster for me. Um, after last year Olympia, I did two shows I did uh, China and the Philippines and I, in the Philippines I finished second and that was like my worst placing as a pro and I cried my life away I was like I thought I you know I lost like second place was so bad for me and I decided to be in coach for the first time because um, before that I was coaching myself so um, leading to the Arnold's I prepped and I prepped hard like at home I was just like in my zone like I I was not working as a waitress anymore. I was like only an athlete, and that was my first time. You so were a full time, full time bodybuilder. Body, full time bodybuilder. <laughs> and um, well, I came very skinny, um, 118 pounds. So after that, I went to Australia, gained a little bit of size and being fuller, which was great. But it wasn't like 100 percent again. Um, then I came here, found my spot, and found my bubble started working with Clay and started working with James and I've been working so hard so hard like like it was the first time you know um, so I'm very very happy about the progress that I've made leading to the Olympia did I bring my best on that stage that day no um, you don't think I don't think so definitely not I think I was like uh, well we talked about it me and my coach and I think I was about 65% or 70% of my best. I was ready like six weeks before, but then I had an injury. Yeah, let's talk about that because now the show's over. We never want to talk about injuries before the show, but as you were prepping close to the show, I think you were like two, three weeks out, right? So what happened? So uh, two weeks out before the show, I think it was like 12 days or 13 yeah. days before the show, I woke up and I was literally like just stuck. I, I couldn't move my hips from back, like tilt, and I mean, the back pose in bikini is like, literally, you just have all to tilt. tilt. It's yeah. all tilt, right? And I couldn't move. And as soon as I was standing up, like it would put pressure on my spine. And I was like, okay, what am I going to do? Because I have still, you know, cardio to do. My cardio was reduced and my training was less intense. But still, uh, my body is used to like heavy training and all everything. Out, yeah. So, um, like all out training. So I was forced to rest for five days out like I was completely so you lost no, five days out of 12 yes ouch no gym no workout and what happened is my body is I'm an ectomorph so to keep in order to keep me full as the judges want me to be full on stage we started um, feeding me mm. a lot so with feeding me stressing and seeing my body changes because your body changes every single day yeah. when you're in prep every right? hour yeah. every hour and um it was good until like the week before the Olympia, starting back a little bit of training, but it wasn't, it was too late at this point. So oh, um, water, like I was watery, um, my glutes weren't the same. Like I, I just know I was a little bit off, okay. but you know what? I, I went on stage like I was to my 100, my 200% because I was so at peace with just 
everything that I've done before. Um, all the work that I've done here, I've had a 25 weeks of intense prep and it was awesome. It was the fastest prep. I didn't want it to end. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, <laughs> yes. So Olympia finished fourth. I'm okay with that because I mean, considering, yeah, considering that. And also, uh, I mean, having all the resources here, I've seen my physique six weeks out, how it can look like, and I would have been very, very happy at having my buddy on stage six weeks out yeah, yeah. to the Olympia yeah. and um, knowing that I was 70% and finished fourth in the world I'm like oh, that's, that's good I mean <laughs> that's, that's really cool <laughs> yeah. and um, then leading to um, Italy you know my, my back was still sore from the Olympia because I went like back to back yeah. but I was like let me like just work out in pain so I was like in pain all the time and I mean really? flying to Italy 13 hours I remember I, I when I came off my flight, I was watery as oh, hell because you know, like I was in pain, like my back was killing me. Oh. Uh, so I did like therapy over there also, and uh, went on stage, and I like my physique better in Italy. Yeah, yeah. And you won. Yes. So now I you're won. you're qualified again. Would yeah. you have qualified for the Olympia at fourth? Uh, I don't know the, what the placing is for a, a bikini. So right now, is um, only the winner. Oh, shit. from the Olympia is okay. qualified so um, oh, I wasn't sure. if you're second third fourth all the way um, you're not qualified you have to qualify again so but you're good now okay. yes I'm good because I won the show so if you win you're in yeah. that's how it works yeah. and then there's a also like um, second tier competition that where yeah, you yeah, like yeah, yeah. Um, you get, you points even if you win it's not good enough you have to exactly. you get points. points I get that yeah. yes. but I wasn't sure I thought maybe top three for the girls at the Olympia I didn't know what the rules were so um, you know, thanks for telling it's funny because my first year what allowed me to go to the Olympia was points also. I won three shows back to back. I won Toronto, Chicago, and Tampa. Like that was top tier uh, competition. Yeah. So I had like 40 points, but still like I, I won three shows, but I wasn't sure to be qualified. Like if oh. if a girl does like 30 shows yeah. and finished second, she would probably like beat me. And then yeah. I, yeah. So because you won uh, Italy, that qualifies you? Exactly. Oh, so okay. So that's not just point. This one's actually, yeah. Oh, that's great. They, they changed they change the qualification oh, system, yeah. So now you don't have to worry about next year. You can just prep. Are you going to do the Arnold or are you going to go straight to the Olympia? Have you decided? Oh, we're going to put it out. <laughs> I, you don't have to. You don't have to answer yes. that question. I will. I will. Like, I, I'd rather do it here <laughs> than anywhere else. Okay. So I'm going to do the Arnold. Yes. Um, I want to do the Arnold Classic in Australia again. I want to win this show. I want to win the Arnold. I want to be Miss International. That's yeah. the goal always. So. And it's good money. I mean, yeah, it's good. The money's always nice. I know you're not doing it for that, but yeah, I think like the second you take this as a job, you you, you really your focus is not on that. Never. Like I, I don't even know how much I won at the Olympia. Really? I no, I really don't know. Because <laughs> so when I, you get a check in the mail, you'll be like, oh, cool, exactly. I got some money. You're like, oh my god, that comes with it. Okay, I'm doing my passion and I get a check. Okay, that's cool. But that's um, awesome. I think that's how you have to approach it. The second you take this as a, well. Half and half. Like, if you take this as a job, okay. Like, you have to. Like, I mean, you have to put that in your schedule and yeah. be, like, very consistent. I get it. But you have to keep your passion. And for me, like, I had jobs before. And I I hated the job that I have, like, I had before. So, I'm like, I don't want to call this a job. Because the second I call this a job, it's like, uh, I have to do my 8 to 5 or my 11 to 12. And then my cardio. But I'm like, no. When I go to the gym, I'm like, okay, let's do it. Video oh. bomb. <laughs> Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> Jimmy, how are you, man? David, what's happening? Hey, how do you, what do you I don't blame you for taking a beautiful girl ahead of me. I actually, I too, all day long. Actually, I, I, yeah, I scheduled you first, and then I said, I'll have Lori before or after. So you are actually first on my list. Just kidding. Go ahead. Finish all right. Up. Thank you. I'll see you later. Good to see you. Okay. Um, well, let's talk about that. I want to talk about, about uh, this not being a job for you and being a passion because um, I was wondering, you know, before we did this, I was like, what kind of, uh, I was wondering what kind of career did you want to have? Because you, you're very young still, you know, so you just got out of school a couple of years ago. So I was wondering if you, you know, what kind of career you were contemplating doing before you saw that you were good at this and I could actually make a living. Um, so um, you actually went to the university, you told me. So tell me about what it is that you wanted to do before you get into bodybuilding. So I finished my post um, high school. That's because in Quebec, that's what we have, right? Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. The post college. College, yeah. College, yeah. 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 Um, I have a degree in business management, and yeah. that allowed me to um, 
start university in logistic engineering. Wow. So you're smart. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm trying. I have a brain also, guys. But I love I love learning. I'm 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 so eager to learn. Yeah. And that helped me so much in the sport also just to be open about new things and very in-depth science and that's how I think for me that's how I became good fast. Yeah. Because I was always always like on bodybuilding.com and like really? uh, reading from like website to website and I would I remember like I would be on my computer so late at night and like printing some stuff I, I'm super old school that like, I would print stuff and like write down like okay like egg whites why eggs why you know like just so you research all this stuff yes I did like I I did research like, how to be optimal with my body and like understanding like m my body just how it works so I think it's important so But we can keep on going on the university and keep telling me I'm smart. I like it. <laughs> but I'm glad I'm glad to know that because a lot of time people uh, not a lot of time, but uh, people sometimes they get into bodybuilding. They don't have a backup plan. You actually didn't start there. You just kind of fell into it, you know, and realized this is this was your passion. That's what you wanted to do. But we also talked about uh, you were telling me uh, off camera that, you know, when you were living back home and I can relate to that because that's the way it was for me. You never really felt like uh, at home at home you know you never really found your place in the world talk about that a little bit and what you mean by that so um you know people have fears my fear was always and my concern was always not finding home anywhere so you know i had a home like i had my family and they're great but it's like it's like the environment it's um not and i would say that for like i was so young and i would be like I, I know I was n not born in the good country or the good place and you're in always the wrong like, country. right you're, you're like and then you're always like fighting back and even though you're doing things that leads you to one step to another like going to school and because right. you have to yes it's like a pattern already set like it's the easy way for me it was like okay easy way like going to school and college my parents will be happy and society will be happy but then what then am you, I going to be happy right And then you have this passion and you see, start seeing bigger. And here is my bigger picture. And I'm right in the picture right now. And I, oh my God, I get so emotional. It's weird. But um, I think like finding your place, I found my place here. And that's where I kind of started to be like at peace with myself and like at peace with what I was doing and that I, I was able to explain to my parents what I was doing and explain to people what I was doing and really being at peace before, because before I was always like fighting back with like my parents and like society and they will constantly have this fight in my head where, um, you know, you're scared because you're like, if I go all in, like what's going to happen? Am I, I'm not receiving a check every month, like yeah. every two weeks. Yeah. Um, you live in kind of a, that insecurity and it's scary and that's where the dark horse came from also like it's not only because i won competition it's also because i i win every day um against like my fear of you know being like in the insecurity of being different and um my parents understand now which i'm happy and who cares society what thinks about but um being here and being around supportive people being around california for me is just surrounded by passionate people of what they're doing you can be anything musician you can be a pokemon collectioner i don't care but be passionate like to your core and believe in what you're doing so hard that you you become absolutely fearless in chasing that every and, day. and it doesn't even matter if you make money or not it's, like you said before it's not the ultimate goal the ultimate goal is to be happy every day living somewhere every day that you really want to be in and living in the present and usually when you feel that way money follows because of your attitude don't exactly. you think exactly yes you, you attract it start attracting and i started noticing that because i was like oh my god i wake up so early here like at home i would wake up I remember like, that I would get up at five o'clock in the morning because the sun was up and I didn't want to miss any of it right yeah. exactly and you get excited and you're like okay let me like start my day walk and you get inspired by everything I would I would walk I remember like my, the first time that I was here 
they didn't rent a car. I'm like, I'm going to walk. And I was walking and walking and just like looking at graffitis on the wall. And everything is just so a mix of everything. And it's inspiring so much. And yeah, I was like, what's wrong with me? Like it's seven. Like what do, what do people do at seven? And then 6 a.m. And it would go like earlier and earlier. And I'm like, okay, that's like not normal. But um, then you go back home and you're like, I go back to Canada. I'm like, okay, I have to go back. <laughs> I'm really glad you said that, and I'm not bringing this up because I want you to talk to talk badly about about Canada. For so, for a lot of people, it's a, it's a great country, and, it is, and it is. I but it's not for everyone. And I'm the same way too. I actually moved there when I was three years old because my parents are actually from France. So I didn't choose to move over there, and I wish they had moved to Louisiana or somewhere in the states, you know. But that's where they went, and um, and I I was kind of I felt like I was stuck. I was stuck in a place I didn't want to be, and my uh, thinking was like, well. As I got older, around 17, 18, 18, 19, you're like, okay, well, I'm gonna have, I have to make a living. I have to choose a career. I have to choose a, a path. I'm going to have to pay rent and a car and a mortgage wherever I go. So you may as well do it somewhere where you really want to be, and it's worth it, right? Exactly. We, we think yes. a lot alike because we come from the same place. So when I talk to you, it just brings me back 20 years ago when I first came here, and it, it's great to see you experiencing for the first time, and it just, you know, I kind of I like it. So. Yeah. yeah. And you're like, you like confirm me also you know like and you 20 years down the road <laughs> exactly no but i mean like for me it's just like okay like someone actually went through that path yeah and i mean we we're different of course but we coming from the same place yeah. that's why you never don't forget never where you came from yeah. because it's your background and embrace it and you know like when i go back i I think it's the first time that I actually like enjoy Montreal, you know, like I was like, because oh. you're visiting. I was like, oh, my God, it's very pretty. But OK, when's my flight? You know, <laughs> but um, yeah. um, when you here, it's just it's good. It's your place. It's your home. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you finally found your place in the world. And I think I'm going to call this video like that. Finding your place in the world, because that's really what it's about. You know, um, people are watching this and they're like, you know, they may not be happy in the situation they're in or where they're living or just a relationship they're in you got to make it so that every day is a good day you know exactly and i think sometimes like um it's good to start with little things and little details in your life but sometimes i was like like you know like you wake up and like you, you're like what's wrong and then you start thinking okay if i'm somewhere some places some environment you think about your environment that you're in every single day it's like wearing wet socks every single day like it's very uncomfortable then change your socks <laughs> brand new socks <laughs> i love what you're saying that's awesome i totally agree with you uh i'm glad that you talk about it and then do you want to say uh, a couple words in, in in french for your uh, french viewers and for your, your fans back home je vous aime quand même <laughs> j'ai je, je sais pas. Je sais, sais pas quoi dire. Je sais pas quoi dire. J'ai comme tellement à dire, mais j'ai comme rien à dire. Mais merci de votre support. Comme je sais qu'à la maison, il y a quand même du monde qui me supporte. Puis I'm sure, je pense a lot, que... beaucoup. Oui. Parce, parce que maintenant, ils voient que comme ça, c'est réalisable. C'est possible. Ouais. C'est possible, c'est faisable. Tant et aussi longtemps que vous passez à travers les, toutes les peurs, toutes les euh, pensées négatives que les gens mettent sur vous, que la société met sur vous. Yeah briser ça puis comme même si vous venez juste essayer faites juste essayer yeah. <rire> puis si jamais c'est pas qu'est-ce que vous voulez ben vous... tu peux retourner exactement c'est yeah. ça que je me dis il n'y a pas de vous prenez une chance une chance yeah. dans la vie puis toute la question du choix aussi mm -hmm. toute la question si tu n'essayes jamais tu ne sauras jamais exactement et puis si tu as, si as peur d'essayer de, puis si, si tu, tu penses seulement à ce que tu pourrais perdre euh, toute ta vie tu vas te demander ah oh, exactement you know, exactement tu le faire Exactement. Yeah. Mais puis, si tu perds quelque chose, t'en en gagnes peut-être deux autres. Il faut, faut jamais, faut jamais s'arrêter à. Se limiter. Yeah. Exactement. Yeah. Exactement. Oh. Cool. C'est right. le fun de finir ça en français. <laughs> un petit peu, ouais, ouais. un petit peu. Okay. All right. Dave Mad Max 6 with the great Laura Lee. Uh, we're going to see you at the Arnold Classic. I'm, I'm glad we had a scoop today on Jake TV. And then uh, we're really glad to have you. We appreciate all the footage that you've been giving us. People love to see you on the channel, and we're going to keep promoting you until you're Miss Bikini Olympia promise 2020 guys thank you so much thank you for your support um please like and subscribe and it would be cool if just people would comment like what they want to see like more do you want me to train more like anything so leave comments you guys exactly. in the comment section let her know what 
she would, you know, next time we shoot, uh, to give her some ideas, right? Yes, we love having feedbacks. Exactly. If you want me to talk about my off season and not being a bodybuilder full time right now, because <laughs> I'm part time, part time. I've been eating, eating very good in Italy. If you <laughs> can imagine, but um, anything you want, guys, we love hearing your feedbacks. We do this. We are doing this for you guys. So, yeah. um, thank you again for tuning in today. All right. Thank you. Dave, my Maxix, for Jekyll TV, and we're out.